Tonight on 16 by 9, honeybees dying in mass numbers. It's my livestock. It shouldn't be dead stock. This beekeeper says he knows what's killing them and why. This is an insecticide designed to kill insects. And it's doing that. It's killing bees. Big money, corporate money, wants to keep it quiet. And then, home at last. OK, there they are. Five years in an Iranian jail, sentenced to death. They insult you, they abuse you, they beat you. Were you beaten? Yes. A Canadian man free at last. Well, it's finally it's over. And mental chaos on the catwalk. My outfit is basically a reimagined red straight jacket. I would still feel like a, a misfit, but I'll be a misfit on the runway. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. You may not be aware of it, but every third bite of food you eat comes to us thanks to a honeybee. The pollinating insects are an essential part of the food chain. But you may have heard honeybees are in crisis, dying by the tens of millions and forcing some beekeepers to leave the industry. In Canada alone, nearly a third of all bee colonies were wiped out last winter. And as Jackson Prosco reports, it may be the human factor, our trust in science, that's killing the species. Here we have a hive that is unhealthy. We don't have enough bees to cover the full amount of comb. It's got a death sentence on it for the winter. It's not going to make the winter. We used to see that very infrequently. And more recently, the past five or six years, it's a common occurrence within our hives. Something is very wrong in Wellington County, Ontario. Jim Coney Bear's bees are dying. This is what a healthier hive should look like. It's got a bunch of bees in there. Unfortunately, we're not seeing the populations that we normally would. We're not seeing honey production either. Not in this area anyways. When they're dead and dying, they're laying on their sides, laying on their back, writhing. You know it's nervous system damage. There's a problem here. Bees are a way of life for Jim, a family tradition that dates back two generations. He refuses to simply sit back and watch them die. I'm working with this insect, and she does produce honey. But on the other hand, she's doing more than that. She's pollinating every third bite of food that we eat. It's my livestock. It shouldn't be dead stock. It's the realization that there's a toxic environment out there that's killing our bees. It's a severe problem. A problem Jim believes is linked to pesticides used on crops near his farm. So he's packing up his hives, driving them 200 kilometers up the highway to a place where he knows they'll be safe. We're heading north. What we've seen earlier on this summer is when we move bees north into areas where there's less corn, less soybeans. Within about a week, I see less dying bees. And they're producing honey. I just know it's a healthier environment. The last few years have been a disaster for beekeepers in Ontario, with massive bee die-offs as high as 40%. You don't like to see your livestock suffer. Scientists, too, are worried about the toxic effects of pesticides on bees and what that could mean for our food supply. Most of the fruits and vegetables that have some color to them uh, usually require an insect pollinator. Christian Krupke is a Canadian entomologist who teaches at Purdue University in Indiana. He is worried about fewer bees, which means fewer crops and rising food prices. 
huge losses that would make it impossible for beekeepers to stay in business. We won't have beekeepers, and that was, is what in turn will lead to a, a shortage of bees because it's just too difficult a job. Krupke started seeing problems with bees dying in the fields near his work, so he did what any good scientist would do. He tried to figure out why. Bees are under threat from viruses, mites, and intensive agriculture, but it was something else that captured Christian Krupke's attention. Every single dead bee he examined had traces of a new class of pesticide called neonicotinoids or neonix. We've never used insecticides on this many acres before. There are as many as 200 million acres of farmland now awash with neonix, a sea of pesticides that builds up in the ecosystem that, according to some, is killing not just bees but birds too and has even started showing up in drinking water. And the kicker? Farmers can't avoid them. The pesticide is applied right to seeds and grows up through the plant and into the pollen, the same pollen that the bees feed on. You can see the pinkish color is the seed treatment, which includes uh, neonicotinoids. Are you saying farmers can't get untreated seeds? I'm saying it's very difficult to get. It'd be like going to McDonald's and, and ordering fries without salt. Marketed as the next big thing in agriculture, safer, better for the environment, the chemical companies even said they had the studies to prove it. But Christian Krupke was concerned the insecticides might harm helpful insects like bees. He put his hives out near treated cornfields to see what would happen. They're receiving these pulses of neonicotinoids throughout the year. It turned out the bees were hit twice with massive waves of potentially deadly neonics. So at corn planting, you see it. Uh, and then when neonicotinoid treated crops flower, you see a pulse as well. In 2012, Krupke concluded neonicotinoids were killing or seriously weakening bees. Soon after Krupke came to his conclusion, farmers in Canada started seeing massive bee kills. In Ontario alone, 70% of the dead bees tested came up positive for neonicotinoids. Despite those findings, regulators in Canada have not stopped use of these pesticides. We have a situation where we know the bees are being exposed all the time. And it seems that big money, corporate money, wants to keep it quiet. But corporate lobbying and threats of legal action couldn't silence regulators in Europe. Faced with massive bee deaths of their own, the EU announced a two-year moratorium on neonics in April 2013. It's the honeybee situation is a little bit more dire than it was uh, several years ago. While bees are dying by the millions, while there are scientists blaming insecticides and countries banning them, the chemical companies making the insecticides say their science tells a whole different story. Neonics aren't the culprit behind bee deaths. Bayer, the company best known for aspirin, is one of the biggest manufacturers of neonics, a product called clothianidin. Just how toxic is clothianidin to bees? If the product is used according to the label, the product is safe to, to use uh, for, for bees. Luc Bourgeois is a research and development manager for Bayer. Despite almost 20 recent studies on neonics that show they hurt bees, he says clothianidin is perfectly harmless, in his view, perfectly safe for bees in the wild. Definitively? Yes. You're saying there's no science that suggests otherwise? Currently, there is no science that, that says otherwise, yeah. Bayer says, used correctly, the highly lethal nerve toxin doesn't pose a problem to bees. But with as many as 200 million acres of neonic treated crops and mounting bee deaths, something doesn't add up for researcher Christian Krupke. And this is the time when the bees should be just taking off. So they should be doing fantastically well. To see hundreds of dead ones is not only strange, it's the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. It's, it's a real warning that something is very wrong. Next. 16 by 9 uncovers questionable science used to get the pesticide approved. Well, if the hives aren't clean, then everything is confounded.
It was the summer of 2012, and Jim Coney Bear's bees were dying. And it wasn't just his bees. Bees in other parts of Ontario, Quebec, and Manitoba were dying too. Thousands of dead and dying bees out in front of hives. Real severe problems. Problems he blames on a new class of pesticide called neonics that are used on millions of acres. Let's face it, this is an insecticide designed to kill insects. And it's doing that, it's killing bees. In September 2013, the government of Ontario agreed with Coney Bear's theory. The province concluded that bees died in massive numbers last spring after being hit by waves of dust from planters putting neonic treated seeds in the ground. And one of the worst offenders, according to the government, was a pesticide called clothianidin made by Bayer Crop Science. Here was a product killing bees that had been in widespread use for almost a decade, with approval from Health Canada. Experts started questioning how clothianidin was approved in the first place. They started questioning the studies submitted to regulators by Bayer. If that's the study that's used as a basis for registration, I would say it would be insufficient. Christian Krupke is an entomologist at Purdue University in Indiana. Krupke is talking about a study done by this scientist. Her name, Cynthia Scott Dupree. She is a University of Guelph professor who was hired by Bayer to conduct a test needed to keep clothianidin on the market. In 2007, she published her finding on the long-term effects of this pesticide on bees. We would take dead bees and do a chemical residue analysis on them. Here's how she did the test for Bayer. She put beehives out in canola fields, some treated with clothianidin and others untreated, to see how the insecticide affected bees. Uh, the results were that we didn't see any impact in the long term. Bayer took Scott Dupree's test to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Health Canada, using it as proof that clothianidin was safe for bees. The trouble was, the experiment was flawed. The test fields were so close together, bees that were supposed to feed only on clean canola ended up eating pollen with clothianidin. If it was pushed to me as this is going to be a foundational study for registering neonicotinoids on a long list of large acreage crops, no, there's no way that that would be sufficient. Regulators eventually came to the same conclusion. The study was faulty. I can't understand why they would do that. Um, pressure, public pressure. Health Canada has now asked Bayer for a new study because of what it calls an unfulfilled data requirement. In other words, Bayer has until 2015 to submit more research on how clothianidin impacts bees. By the time that happens, the product will have been in use for more than a decade. Luc Bourgeois, Bayer's point man in Ontario, says the company needs time. Bayer has repeatedly asked for extensions on providing data. Because again, these studies are complicated to put in place. It's important that these protocols are well vetted in order to, uh, to put the right trials in place. To do the right trials, Bayer went back to someone they know well. Cynthia Scott Dupree was hired again, this time to conduct a nearly $1 million study. We're still assessing some of the results, but we haven't seen anything different than we did in the past. For the second time around, Scott Dupree will give clothianidin a pass. For Bayer, it's more ammunition for its fight to keep clothianidin on the market. The test was done on one crop, canola, and Scott Dupree did not start with clean bees or hives. If the hives aren't clean, then everything is confounded. Then you don't know what you're going in with. You don't have a, a baseline data, how healthy were those hives, how stressed, how uh, contaminated, if at all. Doesn't that change your results if the bees aren't clean, so to speak? And we have records that indicated that they were choice colonies for this particular study. They all went into the, into the study of equal strength. Scott Dupree defends her science, but researcher Christian Krupke says the experiment design is outdated, simplistic and uninformative. He wonders if Bayer had a hand in shaping the latest test that found its product was safe for bees. If there's any control 
or oversight or direction of not only designing of studies, but what we infer from those studies, then, then you can't do the work. Scott Dupree admits Bayer had a hand in designing the experiment, but denies they influenced the findings. Do you think there'd be fewer questions about your science if it wasn't funded by Bayer? It's a personal insult that I would change or do something different with my science because of the person funding my particular project. If you're here to tear apart my science and, and utilize my studies as the basis for all the problems in beekeeping in, in Canada, well, I, I consider that to be completely unfair. Ultimately, Health Canada will use Scott Dupree's nearly $1 million study to help them decide whether to give the thumbs up or down to clothianidin. But that won't happen for at least five more years. We asked Health Canada for an on-camera interview to explain why it approved clothianidin, why it gave Bayer almost three years to come up with more research to show the chemical is safe. They sent an email saying, at the time of registration, Health Canada determined the use of clothianidin was unlikely to result in unacceptable risks when used appropriately. Despite a faulty study, incomplete evidence, and what seems like endless delays, Bayer insists diseases and loss of habitat are the real threat. Their product is safe for bees, and they're making it even safer. When we develop a product and we get a product registered, it goes through a lot of stringent tests that we need to, to produce. In the case of the neonicotin C treatment, um, the benefit far outweigh um, the risk. It has been almost a decade since Health Canada asked Bayer for science showing its product was safe for bees. The company still hasn't answered that basic question. Nearly 10 years, millions of dead bees, a problem that threatens our food supply, threatens to wipe out a way of life. I'm not sure whether I plan on continuing to beekeep. It's devastating what we're seeing. We need to see a change. In France, they started banning those controversial pesticides called neonics a decade ago. And there hasn't been any serious impact on crop yields. We'll be right back.